Welcome to Taking Tests and Exam, a freshman seminar presentation by Joel Thomas. As we start our unit about tests, it's good to start off thinking about test anxiety. And many people deal with that. Uh, we're going to cover a few basic uh, concepts about this that um, you may not get all of this from the book, but these are things worth knowing and worth thinking about. Obviously, freshman seminar is not a psychology course, so we're not going to get too deeply into this, but there are some things that we can think about as far as how test anxiety forms. Now, of course, some of it may relate to personality and uh, just psychological conditions that um, lots of different people have different types of anxiety. Sometimes in a person who may not have lots of different types of anxiety, just X anxiety is the main one, and sometimes it's because of something that happened in childhood, either a parent or teacher early on really um, hassled somebody over bad grades or made you feel really um, bad about the grades you were getting. Uh, maybe there are some unrealistic standards that you were expected to achieve. Here are some symptoms of test anxiety, and this is one of those quick little tests you can take to see um, how well it matches you. So this starts on our page right here, we see, and moves on to the next page. So we'll just keep on going. So you might have test anxiety if you answer yes to four of the more of the following. One, I have a hard time getting started studying for a test. Two, when studying, when studying for a test, I find many things that distract me. Number three, I expect to do poorly in a test no matter how much or how hard I study. Number four, I have a hard time sleeping the night before a test. Number five, when taking a test, I experience physical discomfort such as sweaty palms, an upset stomach, a headache, difficulty breathing, and, te and tension in my muscles. Number six, when taking a test, I find it difficult to understand the directions and questions. Number seven, when taking a test, I have difficulty organizing my thoughts. Number eight, when taking a test, I often draw a blank. Number nine, when taking a test, I find my mind wandering to other things. Number 10, I usually score lower on a test than I do on assignments and papers. And number 11, after a test, I remember information I couldn't recall during the test. Now, obviously, if your test anxiety stems from or larger anxiety issues, um, you should definitely go seek out counseling. And if nothing else, talk to your instructor or professor and, and uh, work with them to find ways to make sure that um, maybe they can help you come up with some strategies and, and work with things on an individual things on an individual class basis. Um, and you can also even um, read up better on. Uh, what we've talked about with mindfulness and other techniques that will help you um, with your mental side of it as well. However, preparation often can help us be a bit less anxious for tests. So here are some basic ideas on that. Some of these seem like common sense about taking notes and making sure that you get your homework assignments done. But those things often have aspects in them that you need to know for the test. And if you are taking good notes and doing the assignments, then that material's in your head and it gives you something to look back over as well. Reviewing regularly is something about already in terms of class preparation, but again, if you're reviewing something every day or every other day, then it's very familiar to you by the time the test rolls around. Keeping a positive attitude can be really tough, um, but again, going through and saying that you can do it, again, this is where you might seek out um, bigger sources than just, just this freshman seminar class on how to um, help your attitude. Another good idea is um, budgeting your time wisely. Again, something else we've talked about this class, but making sure you're carving out study time regularly rather than just waiting right up until a test and then cramming for that one. Um, if you're looking at things regularly, that helps. And some instructors have, instructors have review sessions, or you can form your own with other class members. As you get closer to the test, then watch some other things that can really help you. And many of the students who watch this are athletes or were athletes in high school or um, again you may still be an athlete here at Ensola College and most athletes know the importance of proper conditioning and proper nutrition and and these things can help us out quite a bit in terms of our academic life as well so again getting enough sleep I know that's hard on a college schedule but sleeping helps your brain be fresher and it helps solidify things in your brain after you study um, and being alert again is very important so getting enough sleep right before the test is, is crucial. Um, again watching what you eat I mean again if you're a basketball player or you know um, softball, baseball, golf, whatever you're 
getting to the point in life where you can't go binge on McDonald's or some other junk food um, right before a game. You wouldn't do that for a big athletic event or even practice. So don't do that for your tests either. Your brain will work a lot better on uh, higher quality nutritious food. There's some other things with relaxation like herbal tea and exercising. Again, just maintaining a healthy lifestyle will help you feel better overall and those things do help you when you get to the test time. Then when you get to the day of the exam, here are a few more tips. Um, again, get to class a little bit early but not super early that you're going to be stressed out. Um, again, different people work different ways but something to consider. Um, and again, if you're really highly prone to anxiety, then discussing the test with other people can just open you, open you up to all kinds of issues. And then when you're getting to the test, you want to stay relaxed as much as you can. Um, try not to panic. Learn to control your mind a little bit better. Deep, slow breathing really helps. And this is true for many aspects of life, but especially tests and focusing on positive self-statements or mantras. Um, again, it might seem silly, but it can really work for you. Here's some more tips for actually taking the test. Of course, being prepared and bringing what you need is important. Um, some professors will let you use a watch or something to uh, keep track of the time and make sure that you're spending a fair amount of time on the right questions that you should. Um, but generally, you're going to want to keep your phone put away at the same time and limit your distractions. distractions. Um, just keeping focus on your own paper. I know we all stare off into space sometimes, but make sure you're not looking at somebody else's paper and can be accused of cheating. Um, as you're working through the test, you are allowed to write in the margins, unless otherwise notified and unless the professor says otherwise. Often you can take notes on the test. I would put like a line drawn to show where you're just, you know, um, ideas are. But doing that can really help, especially if you're trying to plot out an essay. Um, another little thing you can do is uh, think about what to do with an answer. Sometimes the hunches that we have, the gut feelings, if we can't come up with anything better, sometimes we can go. Here are a few more tips. Do the easiest problems first. Sometimes we have that option, sometimes we don't, but that's good to do. The next thing is, again, know time-wise what you need, know what you need to do so you're not rushing. You'll end up making sloppy mistakes if you rush. Keeping the breathing going, again, seems like a common sense thing, but especially uh, uh, with harder tests. Sometimes it's good to practice your breathing and just kind of keep that regulated. Uh, make sure that you're stretching out a little bit so you don't get cramped and, and distracted by that. Um, and that can also help you not be so tense. As you get to the individual questions, make sure that you read the entire thing. Look for details. And if you don't understand a question, ask the instructor for a little bit more explanation if you need to. Do the best you can with that. Make sure that as you write, Keep in mind that your instructor needs to be able to read what you're writing. And again, try to save a little time at the end so you can go back and make sure that you've provided an answer for every question. You can double check. In this next section, we're going to go over some strategies for different types of questions often encountered. For multiple choice, again, make sure you read through the entire thing so you know what you're looking for. And it helps to kind of have in your mind, um, see if you can answer before you even see the choices. That will help you sometimes not get so confused. Um, some students, uh, students uh, find it very helpful to go through and eliminate, even cross out answers you know you're not right, and that'll narrow it down if you're not quite sure. Again, make sure you're reading through all the choices and not just diving in. And if nothing else, go ahead and guess. It, it drives me crazy when I've given tests and students don't even try. They don't even guess. They said, well, I didn't know. Well, if you guessed, then you had a one in four chance or something. Um, and again, maybe if you had eliminated one or two, you have an even better chance. Um, so uh, do the best you can with that, and sometimes there's no harm in guessing if you otherwise With true-false questions, um, in general, experts say that there are usually more true answers than false ones. Again, watch out for those tricky words, um, you know, as you're, as you're going through there, and so read things very carefully. And again, there are some key words here that often indicate false answers like never always and every because your professor is trying to make you say well if it's true then this could never ever ever be the case and usually there's an exception um, words like usually sometimes and generally often mean you're looking at a true answer because they're saying in most cases again a little bit more reasonable approach and again if any part of the statement is false then the whole thing is false 
And we talked about guessing already, with true or false especially, make sure you at least try because you've got a 50% chance of being With true or false questions, um, in general, experts say that there are usually more true answers than false ones. Again, watch out for those tricky words, um, you know, as you're, as you're going through there and to read things very carefully. And again, there are some key words here that often indicate false answers, like never, always, and every, because your professor is trying to make you say, well, if it's true, then this could never, ever, ever be the case, and usually there's an exception. Um, words like usually, sometimes, and generally often mean you're looking at a true answer because they're saying, in most cases, again, a little bit more reasonable approach. And again, if any part of the statement is false, then the whole thing is false. And we talked about guessing already, with true or false especially, make sure you at least try because you've got a 50% chance of being Short answers can sometimes be especially tough because you aren't trying to eliminate some and, and you're not seeing the answer in front of you and just have to make the right choice. Um, you're actually having to memorize things. So here's some good tips with that. You can use flashcards and other strategies as you're studying. Um, sometimes, um, sometimes with flashcards it helps to write key terms and dates and concepts on the front and then the definition event and explanations on the back. Again, depending on what kind of information you're looking at there. Um, it's often good to go through your text and try to guess what types of things are going to be on the test. Again, depends on if the instructor gets it from notes or the textbook or a mixture of both or PowerPoints in a class like this one. Um, again, you can kind of look and figure out what questions might be there based on what the instructor stresses and focuses on. And again, even if your answer seems ridiculous to you, you don't lose anything trying a ridiculous answer if your other option is leaving nothing. Um, who knows, sometimes your instructor likes your creativity or feels like um, your thoughts are getting you close to the answer and will at least give you some credit. Also with short answers, you can come back and get through the test if you want and then maybe things you see in the test will help you with a more educated guess. Again, I know some of the online quizzes and tests don't allow you to move back and around, but oftentimes if you have a paper test, you do have that option. And again, make sure you read through the paper, uh, the question carefully, and, and that you're aware of everything that the question is asking you for. With essay questions on a test, you really want to make sure you read the care, uh, questions through carefully and make sure you're covering everything. Often there are multiple parts to an essay question, and you want to make sure you're doing everything the instructor asks for. You want to watch the line between providing as many details as the professor needs to know and also being, con and also being concise so you're not wasting your time and, and making a professor feel frustrated or feel like you're just trying to write as much as you can and hope you circle around the answer somewhere. As you look at the prompt, you want to know the key words in an essay. Things like analyze, compare, contrast. Again, we have resources in our book and other places. In writing one book, there's a unit that you can look through on taking essay exams. And you can look more into what these different words mean and some of the strategies for taking essay exams. Um, and those will really help you. Um, so that when you encounter those words, you know what to do. Make sure that any writing you do is legible again. Your, your professor needs to be able to read it. Often what has helped many students, including me, is to outline your essay before you actually write it. That will help you not wander. Um, that'll help you know where you want to fit things in. And that way you're not forgetting things and trying to squeak them in into the margins. Make sure you go back through and proofread and make a uh, single line through any mistakes and adjust them. And again, often if you have room on a page in your writing, leave yourself some space between lines in case you do need to add those um, other little things. Once you've filled out the entire test, you want to go back, look it over, and you, you know, as you're submitting it. And then when you get it back, look over it again. Don't just grab it from the professor and uh, look at the score and celebrate or vent or, you know, yell bad words or whatever. Um, look it over and look it over and, and actually learn from what you did on there. And often you're going to look at questions and you're not going to be sure why you missed it. So ask your professor, be very nice and humble and, you know, don't demand things. But it's good to get that answer and information because you may see that same thing come up on other tests, especially midterms and finals. Then what I would say is 
regardless of how you do on the test, have some little reward that you worked your way through it. Again, this isn't applicable to everybody, but if you have test anxiety and, and this helps you to be looking forward to something, go for it. Um, but again, set a standard for yourself and something to celebrate if you reach that standard. Um, don't dwell on your mistakes. Uh, work through whatever you need to with this test and then let's review. First you want to start preparing for a test uh, the very first day of the course. I know we're a few weeks in when you're reading this, but it's not too late to start preparing ahead. Um, try to ask the professor ahead of time what kind of test you might be taking and any other tips of how you should be taking notes. You should be taking notes. Um, be prepared physically. Again, you are in season uh, throughout the semester. Um, make sure you're getting proper sleep, diet, and exercise. Make sure that you're emotionally in the best place you can be. Try to be relaxed and try to work on your confidence here. Um, if you do have a severe test anxiety, then you might want to seek outside help. Um, I am not a counselor. You can come talk to me as your instructor. But again, if you need to seek out counseling, you can do that. And often the uh, college, whether it's in Silicon College or other universities, they do have um, either professionals on campus or access to professionals for students. I recommend joining a study group and participating as uh, well as you can. And of course, we never want to cheat. Again, we never, ever, ever want to cheat. Often you will be found out in the weirdest ways. All right, thanks for paying attention, everyone. Make sure that you read the associated chapter in the book and take, place, uh, take part in the activities. All right, thanks for your